Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This video module is going to be on the distribution of gains and losses from international uh, trade. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be concerned about the gains to exporters and the losses uh, to uh, importers. We can take up these topics with the familiar supply and demand curve and, uh, graph that we have used repeatedly throughout uh, these video modules. We have a demand, uh, domestic demand for uh, a, a particular good. We have a supply of that good from domestic uh, producers. If in fact we have trade between uh, this country and, and another country, uh, this good is, is going to be exported. This means that the um, uh, demand curve for the good is going to rise with the increase in demand reflecting the uh, foreign consumption by uh, producers. The result of this is if the price remains at uh, P1, uh, the quantity demanded is going to go to Q2, but of course the price will rise and we will end up at this intersection here with a quantity demanded and supplied equal to Q3. The price will go from P1 uh, to P2. Uh, this means that producers can uh, gain producers of the exported product can gain um, by expanding production from Q1 to Q3. They also gain because their revenues go from uh, P1 times Q1, which is one rectangle side times the other rectangle side, with the, with the area bounded by 0, P1, uh, A, uh, Q1, representing the revenue prior to uh, international trade. With international trade, the price goes to P2, quantity Q3, and now the revenue that can be received is 0, P2, uh, B, uh, Q3. The increase in revenue to domestic producers from the advent of exports is equal to that L-shaped area, P1, P2, uh, B, Q3, Q1, uh, A. We note that the additional cost of producing these additional units is represented by the uh, supply curve. If we add up all of these marginal costs of producing these units, we get a total increase in cost equal to Q1, A, B, Q3. But revenues has gone up by uh, this amount, which means that uh, one of the reasons exporters love exports is not only does it increase their revenues and output, but more importantly, it increases their profits to the tune of P1, uh, P2, uh, B, uh, A, this area right there. So exporters no doubt have an incentive to lobby uh, for international uh, trade. Importers, on the other hand, is a, a different question because if this is the, the domestic demand and this is the domestic supply, uh, of the imported good, then the advent of trade means that the supply curve will in fact uh, go up and the shift in supply due to uh, the greater and greater uh, volume coming in uh, from abroad. The price will go from price equilibrium will go from P1 Q1 to uh, P2. Uh, Q, Q2. The reason is that if the price stayed at, um, at uh, P1, we would have a, a surplus uh, in this market. So the price is going to fall and the uh, quantity produced and sold in this country uh, is going to uh, go, uh, go up. That is, the quantity sold is going to go up, but the amount produced in the country is going to be indicated by this supply curve, which means that the quantity supplied by domestic producers will go to Q3. Now this means that uh, the domestic producers who have to compete with imports once had a revenue equal to P1 times uh, Q1 or 0 P1 A uh, Q1. Now with the uh, uh, imports the price goes to P2. Domestic producers produce Q3. Their revenues go from uh, go to 0 P2 B, Q3. They lose revenue equal to this area here. Now, they also don't incur as many costs. And the cost of producing these goods is equal to Q3, B, A, uh, Q1. Why? Because we're just adding up the marginal cost of each one of those units, which should add sum to the total uh, Q3, B, A, 
uh, Q1. So th when they cut back on production, they eliminate this much cost, but they have lost this much in the way of revenues. They have lost profits uh, equal to that area right there, P2, P1, uh, A, uh, B. Now this means that, of course, that importers would have an incentive uh, to want to impose a, um, a tariff on this good. And uh, if they impose a tariff, that means the supply curve will shift back. It means the price uh, will go up and that they can be, they can regain uh, these profits. They, of course, have an incentive to have this tariff uh, Im imposed. But the problem is that once you start restricting uh, imports uh, into this country, uh, the, the other countries with whom we may be trading uh, no longer have the dollars in order to buy uh, the goods. And the problem here is that once you start restricting imports, you should also expect uh, exports to go down. Why? Because if countries are not selling to us, they cannot be buying uh, from us. The case for uh, import tariffs on particular goods uh, may be strong for the people involved in the industries covered by the tariff. But the uh, uh, problem with tariffs is that they impose greater costs on, on everyone else, including uh, 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 domestic uh, consumers. Uh, I know that an individual uh, industry like textiles might prefer a tariff on itself and impose costs on other people. The question that the textile industry has to face is whether or not they would uh, prefer uh, that everybody else be treated the same way that they are treated, and that is everybody else gets a, a some form of uh, import protection. Uh, if that is the case, then it's not at all clear that the textile industry would want its own tariff. That is, it might prefer a, a regime of no tariffs, because in a regime where everybody gets tariffs, the textile industry gets its own protection and higher prices, but it also has to pay higher prices for lots of goods that it must use uh, in the production of textiles. It also means that uh, textile workers have to pay higher prices uh, for um, uh, the goods that they buy uh, from, from foreign countries and from domestic countries. It means that uh, the country can be poorer if everybody is treated uh, the same way as industries that are that are singled out for protection such as textiles thank you very much for being with me